depending on your perspective, what you're looking at here is either a beautiful mess or just a mess. It is the end game, and actually I think I was partially cleaning up from a game, a solo game of Ruins of Arnak. This is a combination worker placement game with your workers being these archaeologists, as well as deck building game. And you can just barely see at the top here the offer, the card deck offer, which is a combination of items and artifacts during the course of the game. And you are meant to be exploring an island by putting down tiles and marshalling your various resources to allow you to explore both the island as well as a specific tomb, gaining benefits along the way. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the game mechanics. I think this game has been fairly uh, heavily covered in a variety of ways from everything from reviews to how to play is to detailed playthroughs. I'm not going to get into more detail there because I think you can find that information elsewhere, but I'm, I'm presenting the game to you because, as I mentioned on the channel, if you've been following along, that I've had an interest lately in worker placement games, and I've presented now, this is my third one that I'm going to be talking about after Crisis and Abomination. I think it was the different order, Abomination and Crisis. And you can see the link to those videos up here. The reason that I've been interested in these games is because they really expand the capacity for developing themes in games. And you can just even visually hear the art direction on this game is wonderful, and we'll take a look at it more closely in a moment. But even just looking at the, the board here, these are actually two separate boards, the main board with the tiles, and this is the board where you put out your resources and the cards, very much is involving and tells you right away that this is a kind of Indiana Jones-esque exploration game. And the flexibility of the mechanic of worker placement, and in this case, a combination of deck building and worker placement, allows these different types of themes to be enacted in a game state. And that, I think, was the origin, original source of my interest, because after a while, it's I get tired of just playing a more dungeon crawls. It feels limiting to me and so have begun this investigation. Well, why? what did I think of this game? I reoriented us to the side of the board, which is where I was sitting as I was playing. And I want to talk, first of all, as this is a solo focus channel, on one of the great things about this game, which is that it actually comes with a built-in solo mode. And the way that solo mode works is through these 10 tiles that the solo player plays in alternating turns with you. It has instructions for what the solo player is to do, and in this case it would be to send one of its archaeologists out to a place that offers an exploration token. And it has a very clever, also built-in mechanic whereby as you turn one over, you have this arrow here. So if there is a choice, for example, of two places that have an exploration token like this, you would go to the one on the right. And as you flip through the stack, this will change. The built-in solo player works because it is easy to implement and it is of optional difficulty. So you can see here that there are there are five tiles that are mandatory that you place in, and then you have five other tiles with optional red, which is a harder option, or green, which is an easier. So you can not only have the solo player, but you can dictate to some extent the difficulty. This is a victory point based game, and I think that is obviously endemic to this structure of game to worker placement games are victory point based. And as I talked about in my other videos on Crisis and Abomination, to some extent, the theme can overdrive the victory points. And I found in both of those games that that was the case, that whether the victory points was almost an afterthought, because in Crisis, it was so clearly linked to the economic success of your country 
and in Abomination it was linked to the degree to which you could reanimate your monster. Here it is, I find, more clearly just about the victory points because even though along the way you are gaining these wonderful items and artifacts. We'll just look here at some of the art here. Items are for the most part things, utility items that will give you different benefits as you might expect, including a travel benefit or some other resource management benefit. And again, the art direction here is just wonderful, very much in line with the kind of theme that you would expect. And the types of items, obviously, also here, a journal, everything we're seeing makes sense. So the steamboat is going to give you some travel, some exploration tokens that you can use. And the yet, yet, well, let's look at the artifacts too, because you're also collecting some more rarer artifacts that you can use and well, these are some items here the art these are an artifact here so you are excavating and finding these things like this guiding stone or some mortar nevertheless one of the dings on the game i would say at least from my perspective maybe not from the perspective of the genre, is just in the end, it does really get down to victory points that this track here, for example, is meant to be an exploration of a specific tomb. And as you travel along the track, you will be gaining various victory points if you as, as you end on that spot at the end of the game. And even if you get up to the top, you get these cool exploration token things, but in the end they're all the same except for the differentiation of the victory point. Again, the quality of the the materials in the game and the the physicality of the components works exceptionally well. There are these little tablets here, these plastic tablets that will en enable you, and thematically it makes sense. So you need to have these tablets after you initially discover an artifact, you need to get its continued benefits by finding more tablets to help you understand how to use it. So for example, things like that make perfect sense. You can fight the guardians that you might find on the land by using these arrowheads that are the remnants of old weapons that have been excavated. So thematically, all of it makes sense. The locations, similarly, the art direction is just beautiful and really draws you in to the theme. But then again, at the end of it, you are left with a victory point total as the outcome. So you're playing against this, your, what's called, what's known as your rival. One great, great thing about this game, despite the myriad of components and all the stuff that's here, is that it plays super quickly. It definitely plays, it states, I think, 30 minutes as the end, uh, as the lower portion, and it definitely plays in 30 minutes once you know what you're doing. And for a, for a game of this weight, that is perfect. You know, it takes maybe a little bit of time to, it doesn't even actually take that much time to set it up. It looks messier and harder than it is to set it up, frankly. It's a relatively quick setup time. And it's a relatively quick play time. And the play time matches that feel. You know, you just kind of keep going. It's very easy to have the rival player do what it's doing and then get back to your turn. And in some cases, toward the end of a round, the rival player doesn't even need to do what it is going to do because you, you can't, you've already expended your archaeologist, so it doesn't matter if he's taking up other spots because you can't go anyway, so you can just even flip through quicker. And the game itself is only five rounds, so it moves quickly. It is a puzzle at the same time as it is a somewhat push your luck to try to get further, to get better things before you run out of actions that you can take and determining you only ever get these two workers to put out. So while it is a worker placement game, there's the deck building component is, is very key too because ultimately you have to get more cards in your deck to allow you to do more things with the workers that you have. You're not going to be getting more workers during the course of the game. You're going to be getting 
more flexibility in using your workers and more of an ability to explore this tomb to get more points. And I've, I haven't played, you know, my experience with worker placement games is not very deep, but I haven't really seen a game that offers this type of combination of deck building and worker placement. And the mechanic whereby the marketplace will change during the course of the game. So as you get deeper into the island, more artifacts become available and fewer items become available in the same amount of marketplace. That's extremely clever because you have more access, I mean, and, and thematic. You have more access to the artifacts of the civilization and perhaps less ask, access to basic items that maybe have left been left behind by previous explorers because you're going deeper into the island. So that is um, one example of the way in which a game mechanic reinforces the theme. And then of course this beautiful, the beautiful components and the, the board and everything also reinforces that. The, the one thing as a solo player, again, I'm, I'm looking at the board on the side here, and as a solo player, it's just, it's a little hard, even sitting sideways here, to, you know, look over at the market and see what's there, and look back at these early areas to explore and see what's there. It's, um, I suppose one could sit on the other side, but then you wouldn't, you'd have difficulty seeing this tomb exploration here. So the size, the size of the board is a, a teeny bit of an issue just as the solo player. And I would imagine even as multiple players, because everybody's going to be sitting, everybody's going to strain a little bit to see certain parts of the board. But, you know, it's worth it when you have something that looks so beautiful on the table. And it is, um, it's definitely the kind of game that you can just easily bring out. And I think it would work just, it's really easy to explain. I mean, back if there's ever a time when you have people over and want to play a game casually, very easy to explain, very appealing, and very quick. So that is a look, a little table talk look inside the Lost Ruins of Arnak, a combo worker placement deck building game that is, is, is a light puzzle where the theme really shines through.